All right, gentlemen, I just got this handed to me. A hit-and-run felony at Ray's Cafe, 208 North Los Angeles. Got a patrolman on site. The coroner's on his way. Get down there, see if you can find any witnesses who can put a make on the car. Straight through the red light. Said she never saw it. Hey, I gave his wife a tap. I said all's fair in love and war. I just wish he'd hurry up and propose already. I don't care. I don't go in for letting gangsters off scot-free. Are you drunk, mister? Or are you just cracked? Looks like the DA is going to press charges. Anna Rodriguez might do time. I'll speak to the DA. She suffered enough. Straight through the next intersection. I don't know, Cole. She's an easy make, and the DA likes conviction. I'll convince him to let it go. How do you do that? I'll give him something better. This is 11. You got that safe open yet, or what? Your girlfriend is looking over my shoulder again. I swear she says one more word. Honey, it's best if you let him work. Floyd, you better hurry up. That was a hell of a crash we made getting in. LAPD, hands up, all of you. Jesus, Jake, Morty, come and blast this cop. They're upstairs, upstairs. This wasn't my idea, mister. You keep an eye on the girl.
LAPD. Out of the car, lady. You know the way. You can drive. Detectives, over here. Cole Phelps, traffic. What have we got? Dick is a white male named Lester Patterson. Walked out of the bar and into the street. Car hit over there and he ended up here. Dead on impact by the look of it. Have you canvassed the area? The only one with anything useful to contribute is the young lady over there. She lives above the bar. Her name is Shannon Perry. No. It's not a stage name. 24 years old, she left Kansas to follow the yellow brick road. Is that so? We'll take a formal statement later. Right now we're going to take a look around. Phelps, you should take a look at the body. The poor guy didn't stand. I ended on his face and ended up here. The car must have struck him from behind. We can notify next of kin. and has life insurance. What have you got on the victim? From all reports, he was intoxicated at the time of the accident. I'll know how intoxicated once I've done the autopsy. Looking him over now, I'd say he died on impact. What about the chest wound? Isn't that inconsistent? Very common in auto injuries. Look for a car with a prominent hood ornament. Those things are killers. Body traveled a good 20 feet.
This blood is a long way from the body. Car must have been going like a bat out of hell. Never the same. So the driver managed to brake before the impact. It's all yours, detective. Miss Perry? Yes? I'm Detective Phelps. This is my partner, Detective Bukowski. What kind of car was it? A dark red Lincoln Continental. Did you see the license plate? Only the first three letters, I'm afraid. Three, C, eight. Can you tell us what happened? Well, I came to the window because I heard people arguing downstairs. Then what happened? I saw a car hit that poor man and knock him down the street. Tell me more about the argument you heard. Well, there were two voices. A man and a woman. That's all. Go on. Then a third person. Another man got involved. Thank you, Miss Perry. Your information has been very helpful. You can go now. You really think so? I hope you find that driver and put him away. You certainly got away with the dames, Phelps. <laughs> Give it a rest, Bukowski. Let's see what the patrons have to say. I'll take the bartender. You work the rest of the room. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? I need to run a partial license plate, three Charles eight. Cross check possible Lincoln owners. Suspect vehicle is a red Lincoln Continental. Just a moment, Detective. Only one possible make on that license. Registered to a William Shelton, 738 West Temple Street. Thank you. Looks like we caught a break on this one. Have a seat. Thanks, Doctor. How are you finding working at the clinic? It's, uh, fine. Are you sure? Can I be honest with you, Doctor? I would hope so, Courtney. I was hoping that the therapy would be more beneficial. Treatment can, unfortunately, be very long-term. So many of the patients here are addicts, Doctor. Many of them have been for years, Courtney. In the past, these people were condemned to sanatoriums. If we can reveal the root of the problem, then we have a chance to help them. And until then, they stay sedated? Do I detect a hint of reproach, Courtney? I was expecting more, Doctor. I'm sorry. I don't mean to criticize. Part of being a physician, Courtney, is learning to be patient. How is it possible to keep so many of them on their medications, Doctor? Many of their addictions are illegal. Oh, many things in life are gray, Courtney. What may on the surface appear to be illegal is actually of benefit to society at large.
I'm Detective Phelps of the LAPD. How can I help, Detective? Your name would be a good start. Dudley Lynch. Hired help. I run the place when the owner ain't around. Where is the owner? He stepped out. Somebody had to take Lorna, Mrs. Patterson, home. A witness overheard an argument. Lester and Lorna. There's nothing like airing your dirty laundry in public, is there? What was it about? Who knows? The slightest thing could set those two off. Do you know the victim? Yeah. Lester Patterson. He's a regular here, or he was. Not one of your favorite customers? Lester was special, but not my kind of special. Was Lester drinking alone? No. He came here with his wife. She didn't seem too interested in the booze, though. What can you tell me about the accident? Not a lot. It was busy in here, and all I heard was the impact. So you didn't see what happened? By the time I got out there, it was all over. Stalling just makes us more inquisitive, Lynch. We'll get to the bottom of this, with or without you. That guy has a serious attitude problem. You get anything out of the regulars? They weren't giving too much away. They liked watching Lester and Lorna go a few rounds every other day. And Lester was a fan of the love tap. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Yes? Hello? Mrs. Patterson. Is this about my husband? We're investigating the incident, ma'am. I see. Come in, won't you? We wanted to give you the facts about the accident, ma'am. I appreciate that, but I think I know most of them already, Detective. He was hit by a car, now he's dead. More is there to tell. Pardon me, but you don't appear to be too upset about it. Lester and I met on a furlough in 44. We got married that weekend. People don't understand it now, but that happened a lot back then. I see. So you probably did well to stay together this long. What's that supposed to mean, mister? 
I think it's about time you left. I have someone here, and Beg I... Beg your pardon? You're gonna have to run that one by us again, sister. It's okay, Lorna. I'm Leroy Sabo. Well, well. Nice to see you're comforting the grieving widow, Mr. Sabo. All right, wise guy. Do you have any intelligent questions you would like me to answer? You can confirm Mrs. Patterson's story. Lester lost at cards. He was kind of hard to control when he lost his temper. He turned without looking and walked right out in front of the car. It wasn't good. What's your relationship with Mrs. Patterson, Mr. Sabo? We're friends. Good friends. You expect me to believe that? Look, I was filing for divorce. Mental cruelty. Lester could be a mean son of a bitch. And Lester knew about that? No. I hadn't told him. Well, hasn't this worked out well for the two of you? I feel almost bad for busting in on this little rendezvous. You were arguing in the bar and on the sidewalk? We were always arguing. So what? Admit it. You were baiting him, pushing his buttons. We can easily get the full story from the regulars in the bar. All right. Lester was playing cards out back. He lost, of course, and wanted back in. He suggested I earn the money on my back to get a mistake. That was the proposition he was putting to his so-called buddies. So maybe I was a little angrier than usual. Let's just say I took exception to his idea. How did the car come to hit Lester? He walked straight into the path of an oncoming car. You're lying, Lorna. You pushed him in front of the car. If you think you can prove that, I suggest you arrest me now. I would have loved to push him under a car many a time, but not this time. We're leaving, Lorna, but this doesn't add up. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Come on, Phelps. Let's make ourselves scarce. I'm out of here, Lorna. I got a business to run. You think Mal is done with the autopsy? Better call it in and check, Phelps. Between the driver and the widow, I say we start dealing with the facts. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? Messages for me, please. Just one detective from the coroner. Message reads, Phelps, see me at Central Morgue immediately. Results of the Patterson autopsy. Thanks, ma'am. You drove me up to Mulholland and did some messages. You're behind the wheel. We can put the driver in front of a judge in less than a week. You'd be making a big mistake. Run that by me again? The victim was dead before the car hit him. Two puncture wounds to the right side of the thorax. Second puncture reached his heart. You're kidding.
kidding me? Been doing this job 23 years, son. No one's ever laughed at one of my jokes. He was stabbed to death? Long, sharp knife. Length of a bayonet. So the hit and run was a cover-up. I'd say he was stabbed twice at very close quarters. Both wounds thrusting upwards and then pushed in front of the car. <laughs> Easy, Tiger. Clever, really. I almost missed it. But the trajectory of the wounds was all wrong if he was impaled by the hood ornament. Find the knife, detectives. Yes, sir. It all comes back to the crime scene. We need to hit Ray's one more time and trial for evidence. Can you drive to this one? Others will confirm this as the murder weapon. Let's talk to Leroy. See him explain his way out of this. Leroy Sabo, you're under arrest for the murder of Lester Patterson. Not gonna happen, fellas. Go! I'll bring the car around and head him off. It's too late, Sabo. He's making for the roof, Cole. The fire escape. Quick! You look spooked, Phelps. I thought you'd been under fire before. It never gets any easier, Bukowski. Have patrol pick up Mrs. Patterson. So, I give you a hit and run. You bring me back fraud, conspiracy, and first degree murder. This is how a good detective operates, Phelps. You take nothing at face value. You keep digging and asking questions until you get to the truth. You got some sharp elbows on you, detective. I like that. Keep up the good work. Kowski. B Cop says he located a green Kaiser Fraser from the hot sheet. Address is 6 West 2nd Street. Get over there and see what you can find out. Go on. Sorry to inconvenience you. We're on it, Captain. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence.
I swear, the more bent cars we bring in, the longer the hot sheet gets. It pays the rent, though. It keeps Mrs. Phelps in the manner to which she's accustomed. I'm not sure she'd agree with you. Passionate, romantic type like you, Cole? I don't believe a word of it. <laughs>